Hi everyone, you're watching the Wrestle Rock Podcast. I'm your host Johnny D, and I am with my partner Benoit, aka Nostradamus Ben. How are you doing, my friend, today? Friend, uh, uh, fine. And today uh, we have uh, a special guest, uh, a living wrestling legend called Mr. Tony Atlas, yes, Mr. USA. Yes, a WWE Hall of Famer, of course. Sir. That's right. I started wrestling uh, back in the early 70s, wow. and I wrestled when wrestling was wrestling. You know, when we had the big muscles and the guns and everything, and I've traveled up and down the world. I, I got a, a chance of meeting a, a lot of great Canadian wrestlers that probably some of y'all don't remember, like Whooper Bill Watson, uh, Klondike Bill, the Scotch brother, uh, Yeah, yeah, all of them came from Canada. When I first started, most of the wrestlers that I met were uh, from uh, Canada, uh, Killer Kowalski yeah. and, and all these guys, and they came to America, and most of them were, uh, came from like Stu Hart, yeah. had the first wrestling school, wow. and it was called Stampede Wrestling, yeah. and he would get people, he would get people uh, uh, down and make them holler for hours. You know, but you'll have to stretch uh, his candidate, right? Yes. You'll have to the stretching. Yeah, he stretched him uh, from, <laughs> from from here, but he done that. So he want to see if you really want to be a wrestler. Yeah. That he would beat guys up and then wait for him to come back. And if the guy came back, he said, "Well, this guy really want to be a wrestler." Yeah, but when you release from the the Stewart dungeon, you're ready. If you know what I mean. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're ready because. In, in wrestling, in the olden day, you have to learn how to live with pain. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times, uh, like people were talking about Andre the Giant. Yeah. And he drank a lot. Yeah. But Andre, oh, yeah. Andre had a uh, had a, a, a disease they called giantism. Mm -hmm. So he never stopped growing. But every time his body grows up, he would get migraine headaches. Yeah. So he drank to for the headaches that he got because his body. Never, uh, never stopped growing. So he was a, a great guy. I traveled with Andre, but the thing about Andre was, he would get in your car, and he lean back to get the other. He put one leg in, but to put the the other leg in, he would lean back like this and break your seat. So oh, nobody shit. wanted Andre to <laughs> ride with him, and he would break your shocks on your car. So your car is like this. When Andre get out. The car is like this, and you had to take it to the shop, you know, to get it fixed back. We like to discuss about uh, powerlifting because you are a bodybuilder, of course, and we would like to know in your prime, uh, uh, on the, the on the bench press, uh, what is your? Uh, uh, three three hundred kilos. Wow, it's a uh, kind of uh, six sixty. Six sixty. Wow. Yeah, it's yeah. Phenomenon. Yeah, yeah. Three uh, uh, three hundred uh, a kilo. Uh, was my bench. My bench was uh, very, very big. And then I did a, 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 a military yeah. overhead lift, 420. Wow. And uh, the squat, 800 pounds. And uh, I used to do curls uh, like this with probably about 120 kilos. Wow. It's yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. But I started lifting at a very young age. I started when I was 16 years of age. And uh, li working out, it what it got me lifting weights. It what got me noticed for the wrestling. Okay. Cause they would see me walking down the street, and a promoter see me, Sandy Scott from uh, Canada, and he said, "We like to make you wrestler." So then I, uh, that's how I got started. And you preserve your body, so you're always in the gym, my friend. Yeah, well, I work. That's not always in shape. Yeah. Yeah, I work at the YMCA, and I'm a personal trainer. Nice. So, so we. If I teach you to, to lift the weights, I have to do it too. Yeah. I can't tell you to wow. do something and I won't do it myself. Wow. So if you're going to tell people to work out and to be in shape, you have to do it yourself. You got to lead, yeah, lead by example. Yeah, yeah. I can't tell you not to uh, drink beer <laughs> if I drink beer. <laughs> I can't tell you not to smoke cigarettes if I smoke cigarettes. Exactly. And I can't tell you to work out if I don't work out. <laughs> many, many protein in, in beer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a lot of beer, especially with Andre. Uh, Andre, Andre drink beer. Andre. Oh yeah. It was a shooter. Like a glass of water. <laughs>
<laughs> Just like that. His yes. record is 105, if I remember. Yeah, I sat with Andre, and he drank 50 beers. <laughs> But he take one, one s swallow, it's all gone. <laughs> Just like this. Finish. Uh, do, do you want to discuss about this? Uh, oh, no, no, this? just uh, I have a, a question just before. Uh, Mr. Atlas, can you tell us your friendship with the late Bruiser Brody? Well, Bruiser Brody was uh, outside the ring. On the outside of the ring, he was one of the best people you ever want to meet. Just very polite, very quiet, very humble okay. outside the ring. But as soon as he go into the ring, he changed to a different uh, person. His gimmick was very crazy. Yeah, they, they were very crazy. And, 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 but that's what the people like. And once he found out what the people like, he gave the people what they want. Kind of like Abdullah the Butcher, same thing. Outside the ring, yeah, very yeah, quiet, yeah. very nice. Larry Shiv is very different than Abdullah the Butcher. If you and he's a Canadian, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's from Canada. Yeah, I spoke to him. My tag team ago. partner, yeah, Rocky Johnson. Yeah. Rocket Johnson is from Canada. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah sure. he's Canadian. Yeah. So, but yeah, Brody was very nice, and he got uh, murdered. Yeah. Uh, by Invader One in the By Invader One, and there was no fight, no nothing. See what Brody told me? He gave them money, and they both give him a piece of the of the business. Mm -hmm. But they did not give him the piece of the business. So he said, if you're not going to give me a piece of the business, I want my money back. Okay. And they did not want to give him the money back because okay. they had spent the money. Okay. So he wanted his money. Okay. So he, and Jose didn't like him because in New York in 1980, Brody beat him up in the ring. Oh, okay. That's probably the, that the was reason. A, yeah, that's okay, the reason. Okay. And, then, and then Brody wanted to take over the book. And that he was going to take Jose job. He said, "You got, I, I'm going to be the booker," and Jose was the booker. So he beat up Jose, and now he's going to come and take Jose job. That Jose stabbed him. Stabbed him. Shit. Yeah. Uh, and uh, in the mid '80s, you have a different uh, persona, uh, a gimmick called uh, Saba Simba. Simba. Why uh, the the gimmick disappeared? Uh, during uh, the, the, the end of 80, well, just, 91. Yeah. Well, see, what happened was I was already too well known. So the, they were calling me Saba Simba, but to the fan, they would say Tony Atlas. Yeah. And, that, and I started the same night as The Undertaker. Okay. But nobody knew The Undertaker. Mm -hmm. That's why that gimmick worked. Okay. But too many people already knew me as. Tony Atlas, Atlas yeah. and that's why it didn't work. That's it was happened. a good gimmick. People yeah. liked it, yeah. but they knew who it was. Yeah, and uh, I imagine during the transport, the transportation, and when you're traveling, <laughs> that's not easy uh, to carry. No, bag. no, you always had to ship. You had to ship that. Really? You, yeah, because you had to ship it to where you got to go, because it ship. wouldn't fit on the airplane. And with oh. WWE, they fly everywhere. So if this was too big to put on a plane, this was too big to put on a plane. So you just travel with the ring truck. Really? Yeah, all yeah. the big stuff they would put on the ring truck. And it would get and then sometimes they would put it on the uh the train or something. Wow. But it was just too big to uh, uh to carry. Okay. And I on imagine the, that uh, sometime the transportation uh, was late and finally you and had just a little well, short on well, 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 I had stuff that I travel with just in case. Okay. So so I, I I had stuff to travel with. But that the headdress and the shield was only for uh, the TV. So so this was just for the TV. Just for the TV. Okay. Yeah, they, they had another thing that I used for the house show. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Another stuff. That okay. was just for the TV. Nice, nice. Yes. Uh, earlier in the interview, you were talking about uh, Rocky Johnson. Uh, what kind of uh, partner was uh, uh, Rocky Johnson? Rocky. Tag team partner. I mean tag team partner. Rocky went through a lot of racism oh. because of his color. A lot of racism. And Rocky wanted to be treated the same as the white wrestlers. 
And he didn't like the fact that because he was black, that they would not treat him the same way. Like they would tell jokes, make jokes about Rocket. They told Rocket one time they wanted him to go into the ring in Tennessee and they wanted him to act like a monkey. They wanted him to go around the way and go, ooh, 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 ooh. Rocket said, I'm not doing that. He said, if you don't do it, Rocket, we're going to fire you. They wanted him to be more cartoonish. And you see Rocket, he was very proud. So, so, so he, didn't like, he didn't like them treating him different. That's why the first break he got, Vince McMahon gave him a break. Okay. But he wrestled up longer than me. But but I got a bigger push than Rocket because when they asked me to do stupid stuff, I did it. Mm-hmm. Rocket said, no, I'm not going to do that. See, they asked me to do Saba 7, I did it. They asked Rocket to do that, Rocket said, I'm not going to do that. See, they uh, they, they have our Coco B word. Yeah. It's the bird man. Yeah. Rocket wouldn't do that. No, no, no. no he's not going to do that. Sylvester Ritter, Jump Yard Dog. Yeah, Jump Dog, howling at the moon. Ooh. Uh, Rocket not going to do that. Yeah. See, nah, I'm totally so agree with that. yeah, he did not. Want to, he did not want to play them he type of ca- that, yeah. character. He was a very uh, had a lot of pride. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's very proud of him. Yeah, oh, he was. Totally well, well, he worked out with. Uh, he trained with Muhammad Ali. He yeah. trained with yeah. uh, 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 George Foreman. No, no, not George Foreman, Larry Holmes. He trained with Larry Holmes. He worked out with, you know, so, you know, the bodybuilder, he did a lot. So he had a lot to be proud of. And he wanted them to look at him as a as a man, yeah. not as a, a monkey. Yeah. And that's, that, that he, he couldn't handle, he couldn't handle the, the way they treated him. He told Vince McMahon that we lost the belt. He said, you are not going to mistreat me the way you did S.D. Jones. Okay, okay. And then he left. Okay, okay. S.D. Jones, they wrestled a minion one against uh, yeah, Peacock but, Bundy. Against yeah, yeah but, but they beat S.D. all the time. S.D. number one, they always beat him, beat him, beat him. They, they want to do that with Rocket. Rocket said, no, I'm not going to do that. See, Rocket had a lot of pride. He was a good man. Yeah, he was. Very good man. But he was very a proud man. Yeah, he's a proud man. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you have been inducted in the WWE Hall of Famer yes. in uh, 2006. Yeah. Yes. So first of all, congratulations, Mr. Thank you. Uh, Atlas. But what was your reaction when you learned? Uh, I was shocked. I, I never thought they would do that. Okay. But there was a guy, he passed away, named Howard Finkerton. Yeah. And Howard took a talk to Vince about putting me in the Hall of Fame. Nice. Him he was and a nice guy. Yep. Yeah, and, and so... It, I, I, I owe that to Howard Finkerton. And then Mark Henry, the world's strongest man, yeah. he talked to Vince to bring me in to be his manager. Wow. So that's how I come back out of sucking nice. go round. Yeah. Super. So for ending, as usual, uh, my partner, uh, Benoit, a.k.a. Nostradamus I'm Ben. A prophet. Yes, uh, it's all about the French prophet. So he tried to predict the future of our guests. Yes. So, go ahead, my friend. Okay, Mr. Atlas. For first of all, thank you so much for the interview. Really, really thank, appreciate it. Thank you. I predict to you, Hilti. Yes. And uh, you uh, gonna entertain us for many, many years again. Yes. Yeah. Well, well I, I like to work out, stay healthy, eat good food. Yeah. A uh, little bit of drink. Not uh-huh. much. Just oh, a little, it's all right. Just a little bit of drink, but not a lot of drink. We need to uh, to enjoy the life. It's it's important. Yes, you know yeah, I mean? because life you only get one life. Yeah, exactly. So 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 you want to enjoy, but you don't want to over in, enjoy. Exactly. So you want to keep it moderate. But I like go to the gym. I, I like to do the workout. Uh, I like to say hi to my good friend Brett the Hitman Hart. And, 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 and uh, uh, Rick Montel, me and Rick Montel, and the best of friends. Ray Rousseau, and, and maybe? Ra- Romain, oh, I love Romain. Oh, Romain um, is a gentleman. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and there was two Romain. There was uh, Jacques, 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 and, and Rene. Uh, Armand. Jacques Armand. Yeah. Jacques uh, Senior. Ray, Jacques Senior. And then Rene. Rene. Jacques Raymond and uh, the one with the dark hair. That's uh, Johnny. Johnny was yeah. his uncle. Yeah. Yeah. Jacques Senior, the dad. The dad. Uh, you know. Yeah. You know. Uh, 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 Rene. Uh, Rene uh, Dupre. Uh, no. Uh, Rene Goulet. Rouge. 
Grew no, Ray. not 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 Rene Grew Ray. Oh, okay. Uh, 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 he was a uh, Ramon uh, Rujo. 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 Very strong. Oh, really, really. Any like, I tried, good fighter of yeah, I boxing tried, style? I tried to arm wrestle him. Yeah? I don't win. Are you he don't wow. win. But I don't win either. Wow. Yeah, we arm wrestle in uh, in the dressing room. Wow. And that's our jock uh, uh, brother. Yeah. There's two. Uh, and I could not beat him arm wrestling. Oh, he was the only wrestler that I could not arm, arm wrestle. We say hi to uh, Ramon. Hello. Ramon, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, the guy, one of the guys, uh, 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 Rene Goulet, yeah. he helped train me. Really? Yeah, in Mid Atlantic. He was a, a, a wrestler at Sergeant Jacques Goulet. Okay. And he, re, he, he helped train me. Okay. Yes. Wow. Nice. Yeah. Super cool. So, so thank you for your time, hey, my friend. This thank is you, super sir. Appreciate it. Thank you so thank much, you very Mr. Much. Yeah. Have a 